Good morning everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to an absolutely crazy wet and wild lake district. I've just parked up at Horse Water down there and I'm heading up to High Street. Go and tick that one off and a few other fells as well in that area. Here comes the rain. <laughs> so let's go and check out the map and go and see which fells I'm going to be hitting today uh, as well as High Street. So from the car park at Mad Hill Head, I'm going to make my way up to Small Water, past some beautiful waterfalls, after which I'll walk up to Nanbil Pass, and then turning northwards in the direction of the first fell of the day, Mad Hill Il Bell. From here, it's a very easy, slightly undulating stroll up to the summit plateau of High Street, the highest point of the day. Then it's across the Straits of Rigandale, up to the Knot, after which I'm going to head over to the second highest fell of the day, High Rays. Before heading back on myself, over towards Kidsty Pike, the final fell of the day, followed by a gentle stroll down to Kidsty House. After which I'm going to drop down to Rigandale, cross Rigandale Beck, past the rig, and then back towards the car park and the vein. So that is the route. Um, it's going to be a soggy one today. Very, very soggy indeed. And it's also gonna be really clagged in. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna see any views once I get up to Mardy, a little bell. It's gonna be, yeah, clagged in all the way. Navigation should be interesting. <laughs> I'm gonna use my GPS, but I have got a map and compass just in case uh, the battery goes flat or, you know, whatever else. I do apologize if this is a little bit ropey today, the filming and the sound and all those kind of things. It is just, it's very tough to film on these kind of these kind of days where it's there's a lot of water everywhere and there's wind and you know it's just crazy <laughs> but it's a heck of a lot of fun to be out so pleased to be in these kind of conditions because let's face it you know it's every single walk i've been on recently it's been a beautiful day <laughs> sunny and you know great conditions really calm no wind and i miss these days i do miss these gnarly grrr, I'm gonna kill you kind of weather <laughs> so yeah it's good good to be back out I'll tell you something else there's a heck of a lot of water being put down uh, you can see it coming down the uh, oh, down blee water beck and small water beck there but we'll get a proper look at that in a minute as we get a bit further up towards small water beck there's some beautiful waterfalls there and go and check those out God, I'm out of breath already literally one minute away from the cab park <laughs> So let's crack on and uh, get up to small water. It is also a very dark day today. As I was driving up the motorway, some beautiful sunlight behind me as the, the sun rose. And I came off the motorway at Sharp, started heading west, and it was like I was heading to Mordor. It just got darker and darker and darker. So it is actually a really nice path up to small water very very picturesque actually as you get further up winds around some beautiful little hills and obviously the waterfalls as well and of course you know you've got these incredible views here that's Harter Fell beautiful and then we're looking up towards Rough Crag there that is actually my preferred route up to High Street I love Rough Crag it's a beautiful ridge takes you right up onto the summit plateau however it, it wouldn't work today i've got to hit so many different fells around about that going along uh, rough crag would be kind of pointless and in, in the middle really and i just changed my mind as i came down towards the car park there the original plan was to do it in an anti-clockwise direction hitting kidsty pike first and i thought you know what i always do that way i always come down uh, from Nanbeel Pass down to small water. I thought, you know what, I'm going to do it in reverse and go up. In terms of weather forecast, it's supposed to be about one degree at the top, but there is 45 mile an hour wind as well. Not here, but once we get to the top, into that exposed uh, environment. That temperature coupled with the, the wind 
it will feel around about minus 12 on exposed skin so need to be careful and mindful of that it's going to be horrendous walking up there i don't like the wind i don't mind the rain i don't mind cold but wind when it's just buffeting you around all over the place you don't feel steady on your feet it can just be a bit of a pain just ruin you know some good days but never mind it's my commitment to you to get out every week and do a video i just don't know what you're going to see today i'm afraid i don't think there's going to be many views or there's going to be none that's it Okay, this is small water beck uh, really beautiful little waterfall actually in the summer months it gets a little bit dry sorry my hood just keeps getting in the way <laughs> but it gets a little bit dry in the summer but this time of year you don't have to get some real drama here beautiful and obviously very very loud as well hopefully you can hear it this time and looking back east you can see all the weather moving in that's coming straight down the valley so yeah some weird squally weather going on because I think the wind should be coming from the other direction but yeah it'll be right <laughs> I mean this would be a really good place to come in the summer you know maybe get on the other side if you can have a little bit of a nick pick nice and obviously great for photographs some lovely little trees here as well This section of the walk is actually one of my favourite parts. The way the path winds along next to the beck as you approach small water, it's really beautiful, something very special about it. I am so glad that I chose to wear my rock lights today. The grip on the wet rock just gives you that confidence. And they kept my feet nice and dry. Okay, here we are at small water if you are going to cross those stepping stones especially at this time of year just make sure you've got some waterproof shoes on or boots because the water is going over the top of them you might have seen that then in that little bit of footage there my boot was almost completely submerged but look at it beautiful really beautiful and you can see once i get around the other side of small water i'll be heading up into the clag there and as you well know i do love clag If you've read Wainwright's books, his guidebooks, you'll know about these shelters here. If you know this particular chapter, he refers to these shelters and talks about them being narrow and, and what have you, but they are a great shelter away from the elements and the weather. But he also mentions that they are spider infested, his words. I think I'll take my chances with the weather, thank you very much. So here we go. There's a handful of them here. I mean, they do look a little bit like tombs, a bit of a normal shelter there, and a fully enclosed one. If you get in, it's quite dark I'm afraid, but you know, you get the idea. Kind of cute, until you think about the spiders. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool, eh? Right, now got this little bit of a steep bit that will take me up to Nanbeel Pass. This is probably the, the last hard section of the walk, if that makes sense, you know, steep pull up. Oh, how naive. Little did I know what the fells had in store for me. In about 20 minutes, all hell will break loose. Okay, as you can see, I'm just getting up to the cloud base now. That is the last time I'm going to see small water and horse water beyond for quite some time. Wow, it's getting heavier. In fact, ah, good, this is good. It's turning to snow now. No, it's not. It's back to rain again. 
Oh, it's definitely training. Oh, there's the wind. <laughs> As we get into the pass. Okay, here's the shelter at Nanville Pass. I'm going to keep going, heading up in that direction, heading towards Mardale Little Bell. We're back here in a couple of weeks' time, going up that way. It's hard to fell. I'm actually coming up this way, so yeah, stick around for that one. Okay, let's go to Mardale Little Bell, the most boring fell in the Lake District. I forgot to mention that Nanbeel Pass is actually one of my favourite places in the lakes. I know I say that a lot, but there is something very special about it. I can't quite put my finger on it, but yeah, there's just something. Yeah, it's a bit windy. Look at it. Just up from Nanbil Pass, the path splits off a little bit. If you take a left-hand path, you've pretty much cut out uh, Mardale Ill Bell, which, you know, I don't blame you if you do, because it's boring, but <laughs> for the sake of these videos, I've kind of got to go and do it. So yeah, let's get on. And as you've probably noticed, the weather has changed ever so slightly. The rain has changed to snow slash sleet, so it's not ideal really but better if it's just snow because I'm still getting really wet and uh, this camera's probably getting uh, covered so yeah it feels wild at the moment really like it <laughs> this is what I've been craving for quite a while and look at it wonderful but I'm certainly not going to dawdle I'm going to keep on going I'm not going to hang around any of the fells I'm just going to pretty much walk past each one and keep the, the heat up otherwise if I stop definitely get cold. This hood is driving mad. I love this jacket, but my goodness, the hood is designed to, to take a helmet underneath it. So it's a weird shape and it just comes down right on my face. Like <laughs> Which is nice, but then, you know, you can't see me. in the eyes. I should have brought me uh, the ski mask really but never mind. Boring fell this one. Like I said before there's not a lot to it. It's got this pile of stones obviously it drops off a little bit over there down to Blee Water but we won't be able to see a damn thing so basically heading off in a northerly direction now heading towards High Street. If I just head off in that direction I will eventually hit a wall. Now I know you're not supposed to navigate using man-made structures and walls and that kind of stuff, but you know what? I am. <laughs> so once I get to that wall, I'll be able to handrail it all the way along to the summit of High Street. Pretty straightforward actually, but it's getting wild now. Very windy. This is like a million little needles hitting my face right now. Very painful. So let's get onto High Street and admire the views from there. As I approach the summit of High Street, it feels very much like I'm walking in the footsteps of history. From the legions of Roman soldiers marching between the garrisons in Penrith and Ambleside, choosing the high ground in order to avoid ambush by those marauding local clans, right through to more recent times when the villagers from the surrounding area would meet on the broad summit plateau and race horses. It's still labelled as Racecourse Hill on the OS maps to this day. A lot of history, and you can feel it. In fact, I can feel it more than I can feel my fingers right now. 
Okay, here we are on the summit of High Street. <laughs> Look at those views. Aren't they stunning? <laughs> oh dear, what a shame. You know, the last two times I've been here, it's been like this. Not so much snowing, but certainly uh, clagged in, no views at all. Which is a real shame because I know the view over there towards Blee Water is stunning. So what I'll do actually right now is I'll just put on a little bit of drone footage that I took a few years ago uh, of Blee Water and High Street. It's quite stunning actually. It's a very, very amazing view down, very steep drop down into, into Blee Water. And Blee Water is actually the deepest tarn we have in the district here. I think it's something like, in fact, I'm not even going to hazard a guess. I'm going to put it on the screen now because I used to know that fact and I've forgotten it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to head off in a westerly direction, northwesterly, and I'm going to pick up a path that's going to take me north towards the knot and across the Straits of Riggendale. Hopefully I'll be able to find that path because it's a little bit... Oh, ow, that hurt. It's a little bit wild at the moment. Hope you can see me. Let me just keep the lens alive. That's the problem with filming these conditions. Microphone gets frozen up or wet and the lens gets a bit soaking wet as well, but flipping out. My soul is being nourished. It really is. Oh, love it. So in terms of where I am, uh, compared to say last week when I was on Thornfoot Crag, Thornfoot Crag is over that direction somewhere. And down here is Hayes Water somewhere. <laughs> right, here's the path. Now, a couple of years ago I did this. I came up uh, from Hayes Water, hit High Street, had Finn with me in a little dog suit. <laughs> and we actually took this path. So I think I came up, went to the summit, came back down, carried along this path here. Not seen many people today. Not surprising, really. Most sensible people are at home or having a Sunday roast. It's Sunday today. Quite fancy that myself, actually. But I've got a Marsh Bar in the bag. I might have that. Kids to Pike, maybe, just to give me a little bit more energy just to get off the hill. But yeah, back on the Marsh Bar. <laughs> Beautiful. It is gorgeous. I mean, it's, it's kind of cold and wild and it is foreboding. But I think if you've got the right gear, which I have, and knowledge about how to navigate in this environment, and I don't just mean using GPS like I am at the moment, but actually using a map and compass, which I have in the bag, and I know how to use them. If you've got that, then it's a relatively benign environment and, and very enjoyable environment, actually. I think if you didn't know how to use a compass and a map and didn't have the right clothing and that kind of stuff, I think I would be a little bit nervous about being here. But, yeah, love it. <laughs> I'm waffling, I don't even know if you can see or hear me. But, like I said, here's water's just down there. Last week, literally, in fact, it's less than a week ago, because I came out six days ago and did that, that um, pasture bottom walk, when I was looking down on Hayes Water and getting that beautiful reflection, and it was gorgeous sunlight, that's just there. You just have to take my word for it. I could be telling you anything. I could be telling you I'm hitting all kind of fells and just actually walking down the street. <laughs> well, I kind of am. High Street. Kind of getting pretty close to a whiteout now, actually. Once this ground is completely covered, it's going to be quite tricky navigating through. But I don't think it'll be 100% covered. Get my wind speed 
thinking be jiggy out, but I can't bother to take my bag off. It's so cold, honestly. But they did say about 45 miles an hour, and it feels like that. I think it's probably a, a safe bet that that is the case. I'm just gonna head over here. I mean, I can't see anything. There's no views, but whew, jeepers, yeah. Ordinarily fantastic view out that way towards um, Hayeswater, Hartsop, all that lot, you know. All the ones that I've been doing recently, or certainly last week. So a bit of a shame that we can't see anything, but yeah, this is kind of exciting, isn't it? But now I've got to navigate my way over to um, High Rays. Yeah, loving it. Hands are freezing. I didn't put my mitts on. It actually got quite not so bad on that. Straight of Rigandale there. Uh, I'm gonna get on this side of this wall. Yeah, it wasn't so bad. It was quite windy, but in some places it sort of dipped and there's a little bit of shelter. Sorry. Like I said, I don't, think, I don't know. I don't know what you can see or what you can hear. <laughs> Whew. Yeah. Love it. Absolutely love it. And you know, it only started snowing as I was coming up. As I was driving in, I couldn't see any snow at the top. As the, the clouds were just dropping down onto High Street. So this has all happened while I've been up here. And as you can see, it's, it is settling and it is drifting in places. I do apologise, by the way, from shouting and then, oh God, this microphone's, you know, picking it all up and you're getting deafened. Actually, I think that's my way there. So just coming to this corner of this wall here, just down from the knot, there's a little bit of a trod going off here, look. And I reckon that'll probably get me on the way to, <laughs> to high res. Wow, I am definitely gonna end up my back, backside today. <laughs> Whew. Yeah, at some point I'm gonna have to make a decision, you know, as to whether or not I put my spikes on. It's just the stopping, that's the trouble. This hand is so cold now. Um, just from that bit, just literally, while I've been filming this. Enough chit chat, let's get on up to high res and then over to Kidsy Pike. It's gonna get really exposed on high rays now because that is the second highest point of the day. It is a little bit of an uphill. I'm hoping to get a little bit of heat generated from that walk up there. So yeah, let's go. <laughs> high raise now that was a bit of a slog over there then Whew. just difficult now because the, sun, the snow settling and the, it's drifting in kind of the, the ruts of the path and other places and I just keep sinking down you know losing my foot in a bit <laughs> Yikes. So as you can see, there's various little structures here that Wayne Wright mentioned in his book. Cairns, cut of shelters. Oh, well, that's not much of a shelter, is it? This one's pretty good. That's a good shelter. Right, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna hang around. I'm gonna head over to uh, Kidsty Pike, which is over that way. It's gonna be a torturous walk back there into the wind with the snow driving into my eyes. It's not gonna be very pleasant, but it's gonna get my head down and get over there. And then from there, it's just all downhill and back into the valley and what have you. So maybe get a march bar, I don't know. So yeah, I didn't navigate over there yet. I need to work out which direction. I have a feeling it's that way, but I just need to double check that on the, uh, on the map. 
So yeah, let's go. Such a windy day. Can't actually see where the hell I'm going now because there was snow being driven into my eyes. I should have brought my ski mask. I'm so irritated that I didn't get across these rocks. Maybe get away from the rocks. Strong gust. It always worries me when I see bits like this with no grass sticking up. What am I walking into? You can just make out the crags of Ramsgill Head there. Looks pretty cool from this direction. Right, let's get on to Kitsy Pike. I think I can see Kitsy Pike over there actually. Just looming large. That's the direction I need to be in. Flipping out this wind. It's so cold and so painful. hard work getting over here then. So I don't know if you can hear me, my microphone's completely frozen so you might not be hearing a damn thing. But uh, yeah, here we are on Kitsty Pike. That was tough, I, I couldn't see a flipping thing because it was all going in my eyes, which is very painful as you know if you've had snow in your eyes. And it was getting harder to see the ground as well, you know, because obviously there's just more snow on it. Oh, well, it's not so bad here, I see all the grass, but going back there, it was quite deep in places. Anyway, I'm going to head off because, yeah, I was going to kind of maybe find some shelter here and have something to eat, but it's really just squalling around. There's a lot of spin drift. It's very, very cold. I can barely feel my hands now. So I'm going to head down, get below the cloud base, and, uh, yeah, see how it looks down there. Whew. Crazy day. <laughs> it's a crazy day so far. But very, very enjoyable. Gives you an idea as well if you're not used to walking out in these full winter conditions. Flipping heck. Uh, it gives you an idea as to what it's like, you know, up here. If you've never done it. If you've never fancied it. So, right. I need to um, get the bearings and navigate off this hill. And I want to get under the cloud because uh, I want to start moving a bit quicker than this. <laughs> it's just all frozen up. I'm sorry. You can't see anything. See anything. You can't hear anything. Oh, God. I can't see anything either. Right, let's get down a bit further and uh, crack on. back down out of that crazy crazy area back up there it was insane actually those <laughs> the winds and the uh, and the snow as well just need to be careful here this is um kitty house so you need to be careful here it's not difficult very easy to scramble down but you know obviously if it's icy it could be a bit sketchy but now you can see 
Hall's water down here. You can see the rig as well. It sticks out right into uh, the lake. And this is rough crag. I mean, look at that. That looks gorgeous. It really does. I'm not going to point the camera too much over that way because that's where the rain's coming from. And it has turned to rain now. Unfortunately, not too bad. It's only spitting. But you can see the path. Hopefully you can see the path threading its way through what is no doubt a bog all the way down there and then round to just above the rig and then it's a, a, just a little bimble round to the, the van. Beautiful little becks running down into Hoz water there. Quite fast flowing, a lot of water around, like I said. And as you can see, everywhere is just like a swamp down here. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Wow. Really, really nice. Has a real Scottish vibe to it around here, I think. Because you can't really see the road. The road's just over there. You definitely won't be able to see it, but you can't really notice it. And then, so you've got you know, these beautiful hills here with the snow on it. The colours are very Scottish, I think. And obviously these trees. There's just something about it. It feels very wild and remote. And yet, it's actually one of the easiest lakes to get to. Because you just jump off the motorway there at Shap. Just getting up to the rig now here. Uh, a few more minutes and I'll be just going round and I'll be able to see the car park then. I've got no idea what I look like, by the way. I do apologise if... I look a bit dishevelled. <laughs> it just got wild up there. I've not even had breakfast yet. I was just gonna have a marsh bar up there and then get some nice food later on, but I didn't even have that. Very, very nice area, this. And much quieter than a lot of places in the Lake District. And particularly this bit of horse water. I very rarely see people walking around. Hey, which one? Oh, I had a choice there. Let's go for that one. I think that last minute change of direction when I decided to go and do this walk in a clockwise direction rather than anti-clockwise was a very, very wise move. One of the main reasons was because I knew that the wind was coming from the southwest. I didn't want that in my eyes all the way. You know, it's always worth checking the weather, not just to know what kind of gear you need to take with you, but also in which direction you're going to walk in. It's going to make life as easy as possible for you. So I mean, look at the ridge here. This is Rough Crag, like I said earlier on, my preferred route up to High Street. It's a great ridge. Some wonderful photo opportunities up there. In fact, I took a photograph, one of my favorite photographs, going up there actually. I'll put it on the screen now. It was of a wall and a gate, totally drifted. I mean, really deep drift, waist deep. Yeah, that was a special moment up on there. Look at that. <sighs> Right, let's get around this corner. This is the rig. There's the car park, just there. Below that huge hulk of Harterfell. Okay, it's a little bit demoralizing when you Walking down that path there, you're in line with the flipping car park where you've got to keep going <laughs> and go right past it. But yeah, look at this. I mean, just how gorgeous is this? This is Scotland. It's just like it. Just like it. Yeah, so you can see where I went up this morning, up towards small water there. And you can kind of make out a little bit of Mardale Ill Bell in the cloud there as well. Artifel here, gorgeous. And the vein is just over here. So uh, I really hope you've enjoyed it. Don't go just yet, because I'm going to go to the pub. I'm going to go to the Horsewater Hotel and see what that's like. Um, but yeah, I do hope you've enjoyed this walk. 
it has been crazy conditions, um, but great conditions. <laughs> and hopefully, if you're not used to this sort of thing, you know, uh, walking in the snow and walking in winter conditions, it's giving you a little bit of inspiration, maybe a little bit of courage to give it a go yourself. Because it is a lot of fun. I mean, it is hard work, but it is a lot of fun. Oh, <laughs> 